For any usher? Yeah, I play uh, Jinenji. You know, probably speaks like this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's just this big giant. And lonely soul. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that right? Yeah, he doesn't play character to play. I played like multiple characters, but small ones on that. And I played, um, I wish I could remember it, because I was uh, a demon prince, too, and he was cool to play. Um, it was like one of the coolest characters I got to play on there. But in uh, the third movie, I played Seiya. He was a little guy who played the protector of the sword. He spoke like this. That guy? Oh, yes, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, yeah, so playing Seiya was cool. Yeah, it was a cool show. That was a lot of fun to work on that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah! That was totally cool to be that guy, man, when working with the book of spells. Yeah. <laughs> that was cool. Um, the movie, though, uh, what, did you guys like the movie, Escaflone? Did you like it? That was cool. We weren't sure how it was going to be received. We um, got to go to the premiere of that, and it was fun. And I was. It was, it was kind of weird because they, as you guys know, they kind of cut episodes together to make the movie. And I wasn't sure, did you guys feel like, the, like it flowed well enough or did, did you feel it was kind of static in places? It was good? Good. Because we weren't sure. It was like, we'll watch it. Because it's weird when you, you, you recognize the different episodes and you watch it and go, oh, I know where that's from. But um, yeah, Dryden was, Dryden was a fun character to play. And it was, um, it was, that show just looked amazing too, the animation, it was awesome. Yeah, it looks really good. So, yeah, it was totally cool to be dry. That was good. Totally cool. <laughs> totally cool to be dry, yeah. Um, yeah, still over here. Um, I was gonna ask. Yes? About the entire process from when they first show you the script to when they release it and preview and that, which part is your favorite? You know what's interesting about ADR, believe it or not, we don't get to see the scripts before we go in to record them. It's crazy, yeah. You don't. It's so funny because, uh, like, you know, people, act, actors are wanting to get into the business when they find out that, they look at, they look at you like, you, you, you don't get to see the scripts? Like, no. They went, so not even like before you go in to record it? No. You just read it and do it. So it's like a complete surprise to me as I'm going along as it is to you when you watch the show. It's like, we don't know. Like seriously, you walk in and um, they, they do it at block, so that um, usually when they, they call you into the studio to work on a show, they usually do uh, anywhere between four to six episodes. So you can be there for a while. So um, they'll, they'll just start uh, uh, whatever episode uh, your character comes in at, and then you just go from there. But um, so you're looking at the script, and the t television, the monitor's right there with the show on it. And of course you get the three beeps in your headphones and on the fourth imaginary beep is when you start going it. And then you do what they call match the flaps, which is the person's mouth flaps. <laughs> and it's crazy, because you got all these little like uh, stage directions in there. And I, I'm seeing this person, she's like doing this, exactly. Do that again, let's, let's put something here. <laughs> but uh, you just, They've got um, various shapes that they use in, in uh, animation. If you look at it, it's almost like they kind of have like a storyboard of different mouth shapes that they use for different sounds. And um, so you go in and you match the flaps and on the script, they have all these stage directions and they'll say things like uh, little acronyms like um, OM, open mouth, CM, closed mouth, and then MNS, mouth not seen. Those are always good. <laughs> oh, easy stuff. Woohoo! It's like party time when you see MNS. It's just so good. It's like, I'm going so fast now, I'm going so fast now. Just like going all the way through. And then you get to it's kind of weird ones where um, they're sort of they're they're on screen, then not on screen, then they're on screen, then not on screen, and it's all like one big long monologue, and you're like, no. Cause, Cause now you gotta like somehow match it, because like when he's off screen. You're like, okay, where is he now in the dialogue? Where is he now? No, no. Hopefully I come out in the right time. So like, oh yeah, it can be uh, really challenging to like come, come in and out on, the, on screen at the right time. Yeah, so right now there's a, uh, well actually I, I heard, somebody's telling me from Los Angeles that there's, that there's this new Magic Dutch Uber software, which now doesn't matter how close the flaps are, they can put them together seamlessly with the new software. So I'm waiting to see what that's like. But actually, I think it'll take away kind of from the, because the beauty of ADR from a voice actor's perspective too is the challenge. Because it's kind of like, how many lines can you do an hour, man? 
I was uh, pushing a good 80. <laughs> 80 an hour, 80 plus. <laughs> Did it. <laughs> I'm in the hundreds now. <laughs> no, but, it, no, but it's like, um, um, ADR really is uh, something that you can't just ta you know, teach somebody just verbally. It's really something that you, it's a skill that you acquire by doing it. You gotta be in the studio and actually go through the process and pick it up. In the beginning, like most people, start, um, they get between like 50, 20, 15 to 20 lines an hour from a person. And then after that, incrementally, you just start getting faster and faster at it. But, um, no, the only time that, uh, that we get to see the script, script beforehand and we actually sometimes do rehearsals and things like that is when we do the prelay stuff, which is when um, we lay the voice down first and then they animate to us later. So, yeah. So, sorry about the ADL stuff, but that's why sometimes like when you ask us questions, we're like, Ooh. Um, uh, okay. Um, you know more about the show than we do, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like that sometimes, because like you go in and it's just like, you're just going. But the thing is, you don't, you don't get to see what the other characters are doing, because you, you're, you're just doing your stuff. And so it's just like, you know, your stuff, your character stuff, your character stuff, and then the, the other characters that you play in the show, you just do all that. And that's all you get to see the episode until it comes out and you're fortunate enough to either rent the DVD or, or watch it. That's the other thing, man. We want more, like, we want, like, to work on shows and, like, get copies of the shows we work on. If that would be okay, producer people, please, thank you. That would be awesome. You know, because we don't, we didn't very rarely get to see our stuff unless we go out and rent it ourselves or buy it ourselves, so, yeah. We, Oh yes. I saw a couple where voice actors either were in news where they could see each other or because they actually started to interact with the mistakes. Yeah. And then there was one where the girl said the line and then it was like, holy crap, that was so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I said. Like. We have a lot of, oh crap, that is so wrong stuff, like in the archives at Ocean. And we're all begging them like to put a reel together. Like, come on guys, but like, oh no, we can't. We can't. But like sometimes you you need to have like a certain amount of levity when you're doing this stuff. So sometimes you'll just be sitting there and your brain starts going, I'm going into the evil zone now. <laughs> you're like, okay, I'm with you. This will be fun. <laughs> so then all the producers are sitting there waiting for stuff, and then next minute you know the, the flaps are going, and you're perfectly matching, just like syncing this stuff up, and like there's some really nasty stuff coming out of your character's mouth all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> and then you just got everybody kind of speechless and he's like going, and it fit. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it'd be so cool if you could like keep that stuff and like have a reel, but uh, unfortunately the producers of these things might not appreciate our levity. <laughs> Think that it's as funny as we do. Yeah. Now you've done directing too, right? Yes. Uh, what's a what's a fond memory of that or? Uh... With uh, directing? Yes. It's funny because I enjoy performing so much and the unfortunate thing about directing is, is you, it becomes conflict of interest if you try to do both. You know what I mean? Like if you're directing a show and then you also want to be in the booth doing the stuff too and you happen to be responsible for casting as well, you see how people go, hey, hey, no, what did the other dude? And that's kind of sort of like, it ends up being that way. And I did it for a bit, and when I realized that you have to kind of go, like, either you're a director or you're an actor, one of the two, and I just went, um, I think I'm going to stay over here. <laughs> Sorry. But I enjoyed the directing, what I did. It was fun. Um, and, it's, and it's great to interact with the people that uh, you normally work you know, across the side from, you know, on the microphone with one another. It's, it's, it's fun being on the other side and, and working with one another creatively on a show in that perspective. But, but uh, no, I, I enjoy performing. It's too much fun. I, yeah, sorry. It's a long answer. I'll stop now. <laughs>